Dear students, I am Shiva, Faculty of Physics. I hope you are doing well in your studies with these bricks. Today, in this session, we are continuing the part 2 of spherical capacitor. So, before going to deal with the part 2 of the spherical capacitor, now we will recall some basic ideas regarding to the potential of a spherical conductor. When the conductor is either hollow or solid, conductor what type of conductor? Either hollow conductor or solid conductor. Already we know whatever may be the type of conductor that is either solid or hollow, any excess charge given to that conductor completely lies where on the outer surface. Suppose we are seeing this is hollow conductor, otherwise you can assume solid also, no problem, whatever may be. Suppose uh, this conductor is charged to Q, nothing but the total charge for this conductor lies only on this surface. Suppose you are taking the point N, so this is point N, lies at distance R, nothing but for R greater than R, so V is equal to at point 1, 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into Q by R, nothing but for the outside points like 1, this spherical conductor that is either hollow or solid behaves like what type of charge? Point charge. So this charge Q for the sphere we use what type of charge? Point charge such that the total charge of this sphere now lies where concentrated the center. Suppose if you are taking the points that is for R is equal to R. For R is equal to R nothing but I am taking the point of calculation here say this is 2. So what is the potential at 2? Potential at 2 is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into capital Q by R. Similarly, if you are taking any point y3 that lies at distance R where R is less than R capital R. Nothing but for the points that are inside that is R less than R. So what is the value for the potential at point 3 now? That is 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into Q by capital. So here clearly we are observing for the points that are lying on the surface as well as for the points that are inside the surface both potentials are equal. Nothing but V2 is equal to V3. Okay. So recall this result. So what this result says now? Whenever you are calculating the potential due to the spherical conductor that is either hollow or solid, potential on the surface of that conductor is always equal to the potential at any point inside the surface. Simply to say potential at any point inside the conductor is equal to the potential on the surface of conductor. Okay, this is one important result from the electrostatics. I hope already you are familiar with this derivation part in the gas law chapter of electrostatics. Okay, now we can see one more little topic regarding this spherical capacitor. Now, already we know spherical capacitor consists of two plates. One is conductor that is the hollow conductor or solid conductor that is inner sphere with radius A, outer sphere that is must should be hollow with radius B. Inside the sphere of radius B, we are placing this hollow or solid sphere of radius A. Now regarding to this combination of the spherical plates, what we are assuming? Outer sphere is earth and inner sphere is charged. So what do you mean by this case? Suppose we are giving Q charge. 
for the inner sphere automatically this q resides where this capital q totally lies on the outer surface of the inner sphere as well as on the surface we can see it will become minus q on the surface we can see it is becoming plus q so these plus q or minus q developed because of the induction okay so remember these are what charges individual charges that's why still the total charge q minus q what neutral why we are not giving any charge to this outer sphere we are giving the charge only q to the inner sphere okay so later what we need to do outer sphere you need to add so nothing but so after giving the charge as shown in figure a so this is q this is minus q this is plus q now this outer sphere we are acting so what do you mean by acting acting is the phenomena in which the potential of the conductor becomes zero so remember at potential can be treated as zero automatically any charged object that is conductor or anything that is connected to the earth can be treated with potential zero so that's why in order to make the charge on the outer surface is zero so this earth sends minus q amount of charge why earth we can consider as reservoir of charge earth was able to give any amount of negative charge as well as earth was able to take any amount of negative charge simply to say whenever you can connect any charged object to that the charge on the object will become zero by either transferring the charge to that if it is negative otherwise by transferring any charge from the earth to the object when the charge on the object is positive so here clearly we are seeing the charge on the outer surface of the outer sphere is positive then this charge will become zero due to the transferring of the charge minus q from earth to the outer surface of the outer sphere so nothing but after earthing this outer sphere then the figure looks like so this is again q that is inner outer surface of the inner sphere this one again just minus q now there is no charge on the outer surface of the outer sphere why because of this acting okay now take this figure this is problem figure this is main figure with the help of this figure see what we need to calculate we need to calculate the capacitance of the this system so same phenomena here so in order to calculate the capacitance first of all we can find out electric field with the help of gauss law in order to calculate electric field with the help of gauss law now we can assume a gauss in surface so here i am showing with the dotted lines so this is what type of surface this is gauss in surface for the gauss in surface say the radius is r okay as well as we are taking one small element here okay so for this element what is the direction of the e bar so this is plus q this is minus q now electric field direction radially outward nothing but this is the direction of e bar okay if this is the direction of the e bar what is the direction of the da bar da bar and e bar direction also same there that's why while using the asta now what we can write from gauss law so what is the statement integral surface integral of e bar dot da bar is equal to q when closed divided by epsilon okay e bar direction da bar direction the same 
and the amount of charge enclosed by this gaussian surface this gaussian surface na so the amount of charge enclosed by this gaussian surface is q that's why in the next step what we can write now integral e da is equal to capital q by epsilon okay since this gaussian surface is symmetric about the inner sphere having the radius r and as well as concentric with this inner sphere the electric field at each and every point on this gaussian sphere is same that's why e is constant take it out now what we can write again e integral da is equal to q by epsilon so here da indicates area of the small element so da indicates area of the small element nothing but summation of all of the small da's will give what is total surface area of the sphere or that the gaussian surface so nothing but here e into so integral da is 4 by r square is equal to q by epsilon naught nothing but e is equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught into q by r square okay after the calculation of the electric field next we can calculate the electric potential in order to calculate the electric potential we need to choose some path of integration that path of integration starts from lower potential and ends at higher potential definitely the sphere that containing negative charge lies at lower potential the sphere containing positive charge lies at higher potential that's why your path of integration must should be from outer sphere to inner sphere why this outer sphere containing the charge minus q this inner sphere containing the charge plus q that's why your path of integration this one i am saying path of integration this path of integration for the calculation of the potential difference must should be from outer sphere to inner sphere as well as remember this path of integration indicates ds length this is ds this ds exactly opposite to dr dr indicates radial axis length okay so radial axis we can move away from center but our path of integration is towards center that's why ds is equal to minus dr okay now we can utilize these ideas now we will write the expression for the electric potential difference so what is that electric potential difference v is equal to v u2 plus q minus v u2 minus q is equal to minus integral we are going from lower to higher lower potential we are seeing at what distance v distance nothing but radius of outer sphere higher potential we are seeing at what distance at a distance that is potential that is uh, radius of the inner sphere lambda e bar dot ds bar okay so again we know so we know that e bar dot ds bar is equal to e ds cos 1 degrees that is minus e ds okay so now substitute here what we can write v is equal to minus integral b to a minus e ds okay now this minus minus will become plus now again we can write integral b to a e into what is ds ds indicates here minus dr this is minus dr now take this minus sign outside now we can say minus b to a e dr okay 
Uh, what is the value of e here? E we know this much value na one by four pi x star naught into q by r square. Now uh, substitute here minus integral b to a one by four pi x star naught into q by r square into d r. Okay. Now one by four pi x star naught into q. This one entirely constant, na? Take it outside. Now what we can write? V is equal to q by four pi epsilon naught. Okay. So here we have again. Uh, this is the minus minus plus. Okay. Here we have minus na outside. Minus integral b to a r power minus two into d r. Okay, again what we can write now? V is equal to minus q by 4 by epsilon naught into it will become r power minus 1 divided by r power minus by x power n form then x power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 nothing but it will become r power minus 1 by minus 1 under what rules? B to a Now take this minus sign outside. Now it will become totally plus. Nothing but b will become q by 4 pi epsilon naught into as well as substitute the value of r here 1 by a minus b. So it will become for us q by 4 pi epsilon naught into b minus a divided by a. Okay, so this is the value of v. Once you calculate with the value of v, simply now what we can write? C is equal to q by v. So substitute the value of v here. Now what we can write down here finally? 4 by epsilon naught into a b divided by b minus a. So this is the result for the spherical capacitor. When the outer sphere is earth, outer sphere is earth. Inner sphere is charge. Inner sphere is charge. Suppose the medium between these two plates. Here you are seeing two plates, sir. Okay. The medium between the two plates. Now we are filling with some directly constant of k. At that time, this C again we can write as C is equal to. 4 pi k epsilon naught into a b divided by b minus a. Okay, so this is the capacitance of the spherical plate capacitor when the outer sphere is acted and inner sphere is charged. Now we can see one more.